Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. Today, we are uh, heading into day 34 of the uh, ongoing war between the uh, the Russian Federation and uh, the Ukrainian uh, military in the uh, state of uh, Ukraine. The fighting continues, obviously. Uh, right now, we're going to start uh, within the vicinity of Kiev, as we had, as we did uh, yesterday, and we're kind of hearing mixed signals coming out coming out of kind of both sides of the uh, of the situation. Uh, first and foremost, uh, it, it would appear that the uh, the Kremlin initially was stating that uh, it was going to suspend uh, certain operations near Kiev. Uh, and at the same time, there has been some um, some talks about uh, the possibility that, in fact, uh, some of these talks that are occurring between the two uh, parties are are uh, are going uh, better than maybe what was expected. Now, at the same time, uh, there is a another issue in which a reported uh, handwritten uh, letter was delivered. Uh, to Vladimir Putin via uh, Zelensky, the, the president of uh, Ukraine. And uh, after apparently uh, the uh, Russian president, Vladimir Putin, reading that letter, uh, he became uh, apparently very, very much upset over some of the demands that uh, Zelensky apparently uh, had uh, annotated in the letter. And uh, supposedly, uh, Vladimir Putin had then uh, issued a reply uh, where uh, he basically stated that uh, he, he was going to thrash the Ukrainians. So again, uh, mixed signals, mixed messages coming out. Uh, again, I, th I think right now uh, because uh, of the, uh, the military setbacks uh, that have kind of occurred within the Kiev area of operation, we are indeed seeing the Russians take more of a uh, defensive posture, and part of that is is out of necessity. And again, uh, the the concept that the Russians would be limiting offensive operations uh, near Kiev would make sense because right now they're in fact kind of on the defensive. And again, if you if you look at at this map, which I believe is uh, is is relatively correct, we have seen again uh, continued and limited uh, offensive operations uh, by the Ukrainian military within the vicinity of Kiev, and again pushing back uh, Russian forces uh, out of uh, Irpin. And again, if we remember. In the early stages of the con uh, conflict, uh, we had seen uh, Russian uh, reconnaissance elements and uh, special operations forces uh, penetrate uh, all the way into the actual uh, city of, uh, of Kiev. Now, obviously, that has changed currently, and the Russians' uh, situation, again, is, is what I would define as much more tenuous in terms of of uh, both its operational capability and the opposition that it's facing from the Ukrainian military. So again, the Ukrainian military continues to mobilize. The uh, the Russian military, again, with this with this very uh, deep and and large frontal operation that it has uh, committed to, uh, may be uh, reassessing uh, that operation. And again, this was a very high risk high reward initial operation that really kind of depended on uh, early stages of success and uh, unfortunately for the Russians uh, some of those operations have uh, not met with success and, and at times have met with with uh, with utter failure and, and we and we do know that uh, at this time now with that being said uh, as we see the Ukrainians continue to launch counterattacks against these Russian forces. And again, just note the, the, the lines right now. Uh, this, again, is a very tenuous situation for the Russians. And could we at some point see the Russians pull back out of uh, Hostomel and uh, vacate the uh, Anatov uh, International uh, Airport? Uh, again, it's, it's more of a supply airport than an actual 
uh, large international airport again as you can clearly see here uh, on the map but the Russians kill, still control it and, and at the same time we're seeing a multi-pronged uh, operation uh, really designed to quite possibly uh, push the Russians back and, and, uh, and at some point uh, retake uh, the the Hostomel Airport or the uh, the Anatov Airport. Now I don't rule that out. At the same time, we do know that the Russians are starting to restrengthen uh, their positions near the Anatov Air, Air, Air Base and other areas uh, near uh, to its operations that that are being conducted to the northwest of Kiev. And again. Uh, right now, these continue to be more or less defensive operations. They've kind of gone in, on to the, the defensive as they repair some of their units and move other units uh, into the area of operations. Now, that's not to say that the Russians could not go back on the offensive at, at some point. And, and right now, that, that could be uh, very likely at some point. Again, uh, we also know that the Ukrainians in, in conducting these counterattacks have also uh, taken rather significant casualties uh, in some of these uh, ongoing uh, operations. So whereas we, we have seen the Russians mainly on the offensive in this campaign, uh, we now have seen the uh, Ukrainians kind of go on the offensive too in, ter in terms of uh, battalion-level movements. And uh, in the ensuing battles and in, in the ensuing offensive operations, uh, the Ukrainians in, indeed now are, are actually taking casualties in some of these offensive operations and at times rather uh, significant casualties as well. As we understand right now, uh, some of these pushes by the Ukrainians, uh, especially in the area near Ir Irpin, uh, have been met with uh, very tenacious uh, resistance by the uh, Russian military. So again, a very, very uh, hard fight continuing to the northwest of, uh, of Kiev. Uh, status is still relatively the same to the uh, east side of the Dnieper River uh, with, with both sides more or less uh, setting into a war of attrition right now uh, outside of Broveri. We, again, we have seen limited uh, Ukrainian uh, counterattacks and we continue to see uh, Russian attacks both near Ch Chernihiv and within the vicinity of Broveri as well. Uh, but again, it, it looks like right now the, um, the main attention of the Russian military uh, is along uh, south of uh, Kharkiv uh, all the way down uh, to, uh, to uh, Donetsk. And uh, the, uh, the concept, the, the, the strategic concept right now that the Russians look to again, as I talked about in previous videos, uh, to continue to drive west uh, and seize uh, territory on the eastern bank of the uh, of the Dnieper River. Now, at the same time, uh, we are also continuing to see uh, a a Russian uh, cruise missile and uh, air campaign uh, designed to destroy uh, supply depots of the Ukrainians, and more importantly, uh, oil uh, installation and oil and petroleum depots and fuel depots of the uh, of the Ukrainian state all over Ukraine, and that is uh, continuing uh, as we speak, and we have seen quite a few uh, fuel sites uh, being hit uh, in, in various areas to include uh, far west in, uh, in the uh, Lviv area. And again, uh, the Russians really look at this point to be targeting and trying to uh, eliminate uh, the fuel capacity of the Ukrainian military to both provide uh, uh, fuel for civilian use and then obviously uh, for military use as well. And again, uh, standard uh, operational procedure within that deep battle plan that the, uh, the Russian military utilizes. Uh, near Mykolaiv, we continue to see uh, the Ukrainian military press ahead with some limited offensive operations towards uh, Kherson. Uh, again, uh, as these operations continue, again, the Ukrainians are obviously taking casualties and meeting stiff Russian resistance as the Russians right now look to hold on to uh, its footprint and its, uh, its hold on the western side of the uh, Dnieper River. If the Russians uh, were to be pushed out of this area on the western bank of the Dnieper River, it could be incredibly difficult for the Russians to have to uh, to retake uh, this area that they now control once again and again, uh, 
uh, they're going to do everything in their capacity to hold on to this territory because, because again, it's not going to just be a, 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 an extreme uh, morale uh, degrade for the Russians. Again, the concept of having to recross the Dnieper River, uh, secure bridgeheads and or pontoon bridges across the Dnieper River, repair bridges, and then force their way back in to the western uh, area to the west of the Dnieper River would be incredibly challenging. So we anticipate the Russians are, are going to put up a significant fight and uh, continue to hold both Kyrgyzstan and the areas that it currently holds uh, to the west of the uh, of the Dnieper River. Uh, but right now, the, the conflict obviously, again, continues uh, unabated. Uh, again, as we have talked about before, right now, the big push uh, seems to be, again, south, south, south of Kharkiv and uh, kind of north of Mariupol within that uh, Donetsk, Luhansk, and then again, north of Luhansk. Uh, northwest of Luhansk, uh, as well as uh, both uh, the forces of uh, the uh, Novo Russia militias, uh, in conjunction with uh, Russian regular military forces and National Guard units, uh, continues is, its efforts into uh, the uh, attempting to re, uh, continue to assert control over uh, areas east of the uh, Dnieper River, uh, and then finally in uh, Mariupol, Mariupol. Uh, the Russians continue to make headway. Uh, right now, uh, it would appear that, uh, from at least uh, video evidence, the uh, the Ukrainians have indeed taken some really heavy casualties in, in this fight. Uh, we have uh, received report reports that uh, the Azov uh, Regiment Battalion, wh wh whatever you want to call it, I believe it's more uh, in, in 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 lines of a, of a uh, a regimental type of formation, but again, uh, right now, from uh, all reports uh, on the ground, indicate that uh, that unit has taken re uh, relatively uh, heavy casualties and continues to resist the Russians uh, in certain areas of Mariupol. But again, uh, the Russians continue uh, to advance and uh, continue to pound areas where the Ukrainian forces are in Mariupol with both heavy artillery and obviously fixed-wing assets as well. Uh, furthermore, uh, there were reports of, a, uh, of an operation uh, launched by the Ukrainian military that uh, apparently uh, in the goal of this operation was to evacuate some of the leadership of the uh, the Ukrainian military that was still in Mariupol and some of the uh, the leaders of these uh, Azov uh, battalions and, and or regiments that are based inside of uh, of Mariupol and uh, again it sounds like from initial reports uh, some of the helicopters involved in that operation were indeed shot down by the Russian military and it sounds like uh, that operation to vacate uh, some, the evacuate some of those uh, uh, Ukrainian uh, higher uh, level leaders out of uh, uh, Mariupol uh, were not successful. In fact, we also have reports that uh, the uh, the commander of the Azov uh, regiment in Mariupol may have been either wounded or KIA'd. And again, it appears that there may be uh, a new leader. Uh, uh, running that uh, regiment uh, in terms of a leadership role uh, in uh, Mariupol. But again, very, very difficult to confirm in terms of uh, uh, what that looks like in terms of the uh, operational capacity of the Azov regiment. Uh, and, not, and not just that, the other Ukrainian units, obviously, that are deployed in Mariupol. Uh, we anticipate and, uh, and believe uh, that because of the intensity of the fighting and uh, lack of uh, supplies uh, coming into Mariupol, that uh, the uh, Ukrainian units that, that still may be operating in Mariupol, again, are, are holding on by a, by a very, very thin line and indeed have taken uh, rather uh, significant casualties over the course of the last uh, uh, 34 days of, uh, of fighting. Uh, but again, uh, that is what is happening in Mariupol, and again, right now, uh, kind of mixed signals again uh, in, in terms of the uh, peace talks. And, and on one hand, uh, there are reports that uh, uh, 
there there has been some uh, uh, improvements, uh, at least in in the uh, uh, the discussions between the two sides. Now, with that being said, uh, these are diplomats speaking, and usually diplomats are, are going to try and uh, show the put the best uh, foot forward in terms of uh, the discussions that they are having with their possible uh, adversaries. Now, we we do we do understand that. He, that uh, even prior to the meeting be beginning, uh, they didn't even shake hands. And then you compound that with some of the reports that you're getting uh, about uh, Vladimir Putin's response to the letter from Z Zelensky. Uh, I would I would temper uh, any peace hopes uh, at this point. And again, we'll just have to monitor the situation, keep an eye on what's actually happening on the ground. But again. Uh, the uh, right now uh, it's a uh, status quo in terms of the uh, conflict continuing and uh, and uh, ongoing we're going to con continue to keep our eye on uh, Kiev obviously uh, those uh, continuing Ukrainian operations we'll see if the if uh, with this announcement uh, if, if if it's in fact true that the uh, Russians are backing away from certain operations near Kiev and does this mean that the Ukrainians also limit operations, or does this uh, mean the Ukrainians see this as a sign of weakness, and uh, and and launch even even more robust operations uh, t against the Russian forces, both to the uh, northwest and uh, northeast of uh, and w and east of uh, of Kiev. Again, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Uh, as the uh, as the conflict continues, so again we'll uh, keep our eye on the situation and obviously uh, do our our daily report and quite possibly pending on what we're seeing on the battlefield a, a second report during the day as well. Uh, thank you for joining us. Have a great day, and we'll be uh, joining you soon.